Hey there guys, how's it going? Reaper here and I'm back with another painting video and this is the first of my Zombicide Green Horde paint series as I've just got the Kickstarter and I wanted to dive straight in and start painting but this is Countess Ordelia also known as Leia Organa because I'm pretty sure this is based on original Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia We primed the mini in uh, a standard grey primer and I'm covering the majority of the mini now in Army Painter's Deep Blue. As on the card, it looks like it's two shades of blue. So I figured start with the dark one and then I can just lighten up air certain areas once it gets to that point. But this is going on. I've thinned my paints clearly as it's shiny as hell looking at this uh, and looking at the video. But it's not thinned enough that obviously the grey shows through because that would ruin it. But that's it for deep blue now and then we move on to leather brown which is for the crossbow the i do the quiver in this as well but i changed that later on as i didn't like the look of that so i changed it to the darker color that i used but also i've done her boots in this color and also her hair in this which now i think about it, her hair now matches her crossbow at the end of the video which is a bit strange but you can let it go because it's not noticeable since I didn't notice until just now. There we go. That's it for the leather brown. And then we move on to the skin tone, which is Army Painter's Barbarian Flesh. And that's, it's just two hands and her face. And of course her neck, obviously. But that's the only skin I could find on this model. I was originally gonna do her shoes, like as if she's got like open top shoes, but it wouldn't fit with the feel of the game and the model. So I've gone with not covering that and actually painting them as boots. That's it for her skin tone. And then we move on to Necromancer's Cloak, which I use for her belt. And this is what I redo the quiver in, as I think the darker color, it makes it blend in more with the belt as the belt is gonna be attached to the quiver. There we go, that's all the necromancer and the quiver done in the correct color now. So now it doesn't blend in with the arrows that are attached. And then we move on to the metallic parts, which is Army Painter's Rough Iron. And the only metallic parts that are on the model are, well, the handle for this whip thing, which looks like it's glowing in the artwork, which I tried to recreate on this, but it doesn't quite, without doing any sort of object source lighting, um, it just doesn't work that well. So I would recommend painting that whip a color you prefer it to look like. But anyway, that's off topic already. Um, the rough iron is going on the crossbow. So it's got the bolt across the top and the front part of the crossbow. The actual, it's a bit weird that it's metal since that wouldn't work for a crossbow. It has to be something flexible, but I'm not going into details about that. And she's got three panels on her belt, which I done in rough iron and go back to later on again. But then we move on to doing what I attempt to do with the whip, which is Hydra Turquoise first. And then of course I'll go back later on and highlight back up. Uh, 
That is it for the whip. And then we come on to the second layer of her main robes, which is army paint is crystal blue. It's basically the top part of her robe is a different color. And then she's got like an undergarment that is darker. So what I'm doing right there is that one there. That's, that's why I started doing it. That part is actually meant to be dark blue because you've got the end of her robe and then her sleeve comes out, which should be darker, which I do go back and fix afterwards. But if you're following along with the video, just don't do that part. As you can see, it took a while to work out where the bottom part splits as with the way it's flowing, it just doesn't, it's not really visible. But if you look close enough on the model, you can see there's a slight lip on either side where it should be. And then of course the entire back is the same thing. It's just the front part is um, got that split. That's it for the crystal blue. Now we move on to deep blue, which is where I fixed the sleeve. And I'm kind of glad I did fix the sleeve as it breaks it up a bit more because otherwise it would just be too deep, uh, too crystal blue. And it would just, the, the deep blue would look out of place. But at least now it sort of blends a bit more. But then we move on to highlighting up the whip with I use brain matter beige for this as it's going to be have a blue wash so the brain matter beige will shine through that and make it look a bit more glowy a bit more light it'll look crystally in nature which I think is what they were going for in the artwork but it's come off very magical in the artwork as well and then we move on to the first of the highlights which is army painters elven flesh and this is just all raised areas on the skin There we go. Next up, we got the next first highlight on the darker part of the robes. And I use Army Painters Ultramarine Blue for this. And this is again, just raised areas, keep it out of the recesses and the wash will do the rest once it's done. So I find doing the highlighting before the washes helps everything blend together. And then it still has the highlights and the lowlights in there with it. And this is the next part of the highlights with army painters electric blue and it's just i used it to help sort of separate because ultramarine blue and crystal blue are quite close together so adding the electric blue into there just separates them enough that you can tell they're different materials or different color materials at least And that's it for the electric blue. And then we move on to greedy gold, which there's only a few things that are actually gold, but I go over the rough iron on the belt again, because obviously I didn't like it how it was, but also add some more things to the whip handle as it looked too plain how it was. So I've just added the end of it and I've just added a bit of banding along it just to separate up that rough iron. And it makes it look a bit more like royalty. That's it for the greedy gold. And then we're on to the wash stage. 
and it is blue wash over all of her clothing. It's quite simple and I don't think there'd be anything else I would use. And of course I cover the whip as well in this. Legs sit in there. I'm just cleaning off my brush and just taking off any areas that are pulled somewhere I wouldn't want them to be. It just makes it look that a little bit nicer. But then we're on to the second wash, which is flesh wash. And I cover pretty much everything else in this. All of her skin, all of the leather parts, as well as the um, quiver. I forgot the name of it then. As well as the quiver is covered in this flesh wash. As it is a ready brown wash, so it would work nicely on any woods anyway. That, that is it for the wood uh, wash stage. And that is it for the model as well, because all the highlighting was done first. It's not needed to be done afterwards, because the model looks fine after it's finished washing. But I'm just covering up the base now, and I always do with all my bases is a matte black. Just, it fits in with any terrain then you use, or things like that. There we go, there's the final images of the model. I hope you enjoyed guys and there's definitely gonna be more zombie side painting coming in this series. So like and subscribe if you did enjoy it and I'll be back soon with another one. See ya.